Okay, welcome to lecture B on elasticity. And we were calculating some price elasticities of demand and interpreting what they mean. And I thought I would add another one here. Suppose we saw that the, the price increased by 20% and quantity decreased not at all, right? It didn't change a bit. Then what would the elasticity be? Well, keeping in mind that the price change goes on the bottom, that's the cause, and the quantity decrease goes on the top, that's the effect. Then we're going to have 0% on the top divided by, well, doesn't really matter what goes on the bottom and unless it's also 0. That's going to be 20% uh, on the bottom equals elasticity of 0. Now, when an elasticity is 0, we call that perfectly inelastic. And perfectly inelastic means that for any cause, 20% increase in price, people don't react at all. So they're perfectly rigid, perfectly unresponsive. So that's perfectly inelastic. And now let's, let's think about some examples of elasticities. Uh, now, I have a collection of real-world elasticities that whenever I see an interesting one, I, I just kind of write it down. And so let me share some of those with you here. Um, for price elasticity of demand, uh, one that's interesting is eggs. The price elasticity of demand has been calculated to be 0.1. Now, what does that mean? It means, let's, let's look at our, our formula again. Let me uh, paste it down here so that we have it right in front of us. It means that for any percent change in price on the bottom, the change in quantity demanded will be 0.1 times as large or one tenth as large. Okay, I said I wasn't going to drop minus sign, so let me let me add the minus sign there for eggs. So, for example, uh, for any price change, just you know, yell out any number. Suppose you said 30 percent, right? Change in price, then suppose it was an increase in price, then ask yourself what would have to go on the top of that formula for percent change in quantity demanded so that the result would be minus 0.1? Well, it would have to be minus 3% change in quantity, right? If you divide that by uh, 3, minus 3 divided by 30, then you get minus 0.1 for the elasticity. And so by, you know, just put an X Right? If somebody gives you a, a what-if question like this, put X on the top of the fraction if you're given a 30% change in price and set that equal to minus 0 0.1 equals and solve it for X. And you, you can see that that's got to be minus 3. Um, now, on the other hand, what if somebody gave you, you know, you don't know the percent change in price, but somebody gives you the, the uh, change in quantity. Suppose uh, we wanted the percent change in quantity to be um, 6 percent change in quantity. Uh, suppose we had a bunch of eggs in the back and we wanted to sell them and we wanted to know what did we have to do for a price adjustment in order to increase our sales by 6 percent. Well, just solve for X percent change in price on the bottom. And what are you going to do? Well, you can mul multiply both sides by x, and you got uh, minus 0.1x equals 6%. Now you're going to divide both sides by 0.1, right, negative, and that's going to give you x, all right? And so, whoops, uh, minus 0.1, if you follow my algebra there. And so divide 6 by negative 0.1, and then x is going to equal minus 60%. And so if you wanted to sell 6% more eggs, but it's very inelastic, you're going to have to cut your price by 60% in order to do that. right? And then you can always go back and check your answer when you're done and say, okay, let's make sure that uh, 6 divided by 60 right, negative 60 percent has to give us that elasticity of 0 0.1, negative, right? 
as, it, as I mentioned in the first lecture, a lot of the times economists are kind of lazy and we drop the minus sign, but it's a bad habit to get into because, as you'll see in a minute, these other elasticities you need to keep the minus sign. So eggs are very inelastic. Now why? Well, for price elasticity of demand, things that can affect uh, the elasticity include, number one, are there good substitutes for this product? If there are good substitutes, then it'll be more elastic because people can respond to price changes by buying the other product. I don't think there's a good substitute for eggs. That's one reason why it's so inelastic. And yes, there are things called egg substitute, but you know what? They're made out of eggs. So now, second thing that can affect elasticity. How large a portion of your budget is it? Eggs are pretty cheap, so when the price goes up or down, it doesn't affect your wallet that much, and so you're not going to respond very much. So that, that's another reason why eggs are so inelastic. Uh, third, what period of time are we talking about? Um, the longer period of time you give people to adjust, the more that they can react. So let's look at an example of, of that. Uh, gasoline. Elasticity. Uh, again, these are minus. So um, gasoline, the elasticity has been estimated to be about 0.15 to 0.2 in the short run. Not very elastic. Why? There aren't great substitutes. Uh, but it is a decent size of a lot of people's budget. But what are you going to do when the price goes up? You still have to get to work. You've still got to feed that SUV that you have. But in the long run, people are more elastic. What can you do today if the price of gasoline increases? Uh, suck it up for the most part. Maybe cut out some unnecessary trips. But in the uh, long run, you can move closer to your work. You can buy a more efficient car. There are other things you can do. Um, now, things that are more elastic. Let's look at... Uh, some things that have higher elasticities here. Jewelry, elasticity of 2.6, again minus 2.6. Buses and subways have been estimated 3.5. Fancy silverware in China, minus 8.8. .8. These things are very elastic um, because jewelry, some people would say it's not a necessity. Uh, you don't have to have it. Uh, there are good alternatives to buying jewelry. One is just don't buy it, right? Or buy something cheaper if the price goes up. Or just cut back altogether. You don't really have to have it. So that, that's another factor in elasticity is do you have to have it or not? Um, public buses and subways. This is one problem that public transit has. If you raise the price, there are really good options. People can drive their own car. They can ride a bike, they can walk, and so public transit systems have to be very conscious that people are very responsive to price increases. Uh, on the other hand, if you can keep the price low, this means that uh, people will, will use, uh, they'll really respond by using it more. Uh, so this is a good argument for subsidies of prices. Don't make riders pay the full fare uh, for buses and subways if there's a good reason to get people on them, uh, such as cutting pollution, reducing congestion on roads. Uh, fancy silverware in China, again, big part of the budget. Good, There are good substitutes, and it's not a necessity. So I'm going to come back in a second lecture and go through these other elasticities that are common, the price elasticity of supply, income elasticity of demand, and the cross-price elasticity with some real-world examples.